Hello, um, my name is Michelle Dolan. I'm a uh, part of the Health Promotion Team here in the Irish Skin Foundation. I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Anne Tobin, who is Consultant Dermatologist in uh, Italian University Hospital and National Clinical Lead for Dermatology. Today we're going to talk about some um, common myths and misconceptions around protecting your skin. So, so if you don't mind, Professor Tobin, um, I'll start off with um, a few questions. Um, so why do we need to protect your skin in the sun? So it's really important, Shell, to protect our skin from the sun, particularly for Irish people, because we know that 9 out of 10 skin cancers are caused by sun exposure. Um, and 75% of Irish people have what's known as fair skin or Fitzpatrick type 1 or 2 skin. So in other words, they always burn in the sun. So we know that if you protect your skin, you can actually protect yourself from most skin cancers. So at the moment in Ireland, there's over 12,000 skin cancers diagnosed every year. So that's more than all other cancers combined. And the rates are going up. So we really need to um, address that. So the vast majority of skin cancers aren't serious and require surgery, but they can have you know, quite a cosmetic impact. You can be left with you know, a scar on your face. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is, the sun is aging. So exposure to UV radiation damages the collagen in your skin. And you know, collagen is like furniture saying once it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. Very good. So, and can you tell us a little bit more about ultraviolet radiation, the different types? Yeah, so there's two types of radiation. There's UVA radiation and there's UVB radiation. So UVA radiation penetrates deeper into the skin, but UVB radiation is the one that tends to burn, but also it's the one that's probably most implicated in the most common skin cancers. So there's two types. And, you know, another common misconception is, for example, that, um, you know, windscreens of cars protect you from the sun. They actually don't. So you're being exposed to UV radiation in Ireland from the 1st of April to the end of September. Okay. And who is the most vulnerable? Um, what groups do you think? So we know that if you get um, sunburn in childhood, particularly severe sunburn, like a blistering sunburn, it actually increases your risk of developing the most lethal form of cancer, which is melanoma. So certainly it's really important to protect children. Now I think people are getting a lot better. You certainly see you know, children wearing sun hats and using sunbox. So they're certainly, I would say, is probably the most vulnerable group. And then there's the people who are out, outdoor workers or people who are exposed, they're outdoors a lot. So, for example, people who work in the councils or um, on construction sites. And then the other groups will be, you know, for example, people who drive a lot for a living mm -hmm. and need to protect from the sun. But actually, everyone does. Okay. And in a way, for so this year in particular, um, nobody's really going anywhere. We're all in that hot at home. Um, so, oftentimes, people think about going abroad and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, protecting their skin. Um, under those circumstances, but are we, you know, you mentioned protection skin from April to September, so are we really, you know, what? No, you're absolutely right. So what I find in our clinics are, is that patients are really good, actually, by and large, about sun protection when they go away, mm -hmm. but they're horrified when you say to them, actually, no, you need to be using it um, between the first, from the 1st of April to the end of September in Ireland. Uh, and it's nothing to do with whether it's a sunny day or not. Even when it's cloudy, there's sufficient UV radiation getting through at ground level. So that's quite, that's a real message that we have to get out there. You need sun protection from the 1st of April to the end of September in Ireland every day, even on a cloudy day. And there's a report that came out a couple of weeks ago, um, it was the Irish Public um, Health Institute, I think. Um, for the National Cancer yes, Control Program, yeah. and they were talking about that um, since 2006, the um, the number of um, days in which the UV index um, was above three uh, from June to August was probably 75 percent of the days. Mm. So could you tell us a little bit about the UV index? What does that actually measure? So the UV index again measures the degree of UV radiation penetration um, at ground level. And once it's above three, that increases your risk of developing um, you know, damage to the cells on your skin. So once it's over three, that's a day in which you can burn, it's a day in which you can get sun damage, and it's a day you need to protect your skin. 
But I suppose I, I kind of feel I wouldn't get too hung up mm. on the UV index. I think you just take it as a good rule of thumb. Just put your sun protection on between yeah. April and September. Okay. And um, just in terms of the ways in which we protect our skin, so what are the best methods? So, in fact, sun blocking, sun protection is actually probably down the list. Mm. So, the best ways of protecting your skin is seeking shade. So trying to keep, for example, children in the shade between 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock during the day. Mm -hmm. The next thing is clothing. You know, instead of running after your children trying to put on loads of sun cream, long sleeve t-shirts, yeah. you know, long sleeve uh, or long trousers. And if you hold the fabric up to the light and you can see the light through it, it won't protect sufficiently from the sun. And then apply the sun cream just on the exposed parts like the face. Um, lots of people forget for, are forgetting to protect the front of yeah, their chest, yeah. like they're good about their face. And then the backs of the hands, so the parts that are chronically exposed, that are not covered by clothing. And do you think then with sunscreen there's, there are commonly missed areas? Mm. So, you know, say for example, yes. in the backs of the hands and um, probably ears and yes. you know, those sorts of places. Um, and you know the way people um, phrase this, um, I suppose sunscreen is often described as physical or chemical. Yes. And what are the difference between the, the two types of sunscreens? Yeah, no, and it's an important difference. So, a physical sunblock contains um, either zinc or titanium. And so there are these tiny particles in the sunblock and they actually block the radiation. They, they almost like bounce it back. Mm. Whereas the chemical sunblocks um, contain a chemical which actually absorbs the sun. So um, the most common one is oxybenzone. So it actually absorbs the sun's radiation so that's the difference i suppose there is um an important thing with regard to the physical sunblocks um what we're recommending is particularly that they're good for use on the forehead okay. and then you can okay. use your chemical sunblock everywhere else and i suppose that there's been um I suppose some talk in the media just about um I was concerned about uh, chemicals and sunscreens. Would you have anything, any comments on that? Oh yeah, no, there was a study that was carried out um, in, in the States, but the quantities of sunblock that they used were actually way over what anyone would right. be using. Yeah. So, you, you know, it, uh, it was completely unhelpful okay. and, and not relevant. Okay. So. And you know, we hear terms like broad spectrum stock rating, SPF, could you elaborate a little bit on yes, that term? Yes, and, and that can be quite confusing. So the star rating refers to the UVA protection. So you want a uh, sunblock that would protect you both from the UVA and the UVB. So there's generally a five star rating for UVA protection. So you, what you want people to use at least a three. And then the UVB, um, that's where the SPF, you know, the factor 15 and factor 50. And, and really, the best way of thinking about it is if you go out in the sun and you burn within five minutes, the SPF, say 50, you can stay out 15 by 5 before you burn. That's the, okay. the sun protection factor. Okay. Yeah. I think if you probably put it on in the quantities that they... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. recommended. Yeah. And what about the term um, water resistance? Yeah, now water resistant are sunscreens that you can use, um, you know, before going swimming or that. But to be quite honest with you, I tend to advise reapplying sunblock after, you know, being in the water or, for example, sweating, you know, doing sport. Okay. Because I, I just think it's a safer thing to do. Yeah. And we have an array of, you know, sunscreens that are available kind of widely. And um, oftentimes, um, say people have this SPF maybe in their moisturizer or, they make, or their makeup. Should somebody be wearing sunblock in addition to that? Or what sort of protection does that apply? Or so with regard to the SPF in makeup, um, I generally don't say, I say that's not enough, that you should be using um, a sun protection. Um, because a lot of them are only 25. And in Ireland, we need at least a factor 30 for adults and a factor 50 for children. So no, I would be generally saying you're still you need your sunblock between April and September rather than relying on tinted moisturizers or a foundation with an SPF in it. Great. And what if somebody now, a child or an adult who's very sensitive skin, is there should they be choosing particular uh, or looking for particular uh, antibiotics? 
th that's a tricky one because really with children you want to find a sunblock that they like and that they won't have difficulty putting on or make their, their skin itchy and you know it, it can go either way some children it, the sun creams can have a slightly soothing effect and then others they find it that it's much more irritating. And unfortunately, it's a question of trial and error. Yeah. Um, so what I would recommend to, pay, to patients if, if they go to the pharmacy and you know get samples and try them before they go um, at purchasing sunblocks. But there's actually a range of sunblocks and there's perfect good sunblocks in supermarkets. Pharmacies have big ranges of sunblocks. The ranges that have become available in Ireland have actually expanded a lot. And on, on that point, the availability and, and the variety, um, is price an indication of better protection? No. Okay. Okay. No. So as so long as you look for, you know, um, your high SPF and your UVA. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Very good. And um, so, what about if I go out and I'm out and about and I don't get sunburnt? Am I damaging my skin? You know, yes. Is, is it tan healthy? No. no, it's, no. <laughs> so. What happens to your skin when you're tanning is your keratinocytes, which are the cells that make up your, your top layer of the skin and from which um, one particular type of skin cancer arises, are trying to protect the genetic material in the nucleus of your cell by tanning. So they're moving these little things called melanosomes over your nucleus. So it's your skin trying to protect your cell. So there is no such thing as a healthy tan. Okay, so and we shouldn't be trying for a tan. We shouldn't be, you know, like you shouldn't be, you know, if you're yeah. sunbathing, it should be under shade. It should be on, 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 under an umbrella. Like there's no issue. I never say to patients, don't go on sun holidays. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's no issue about going away. You know, the sun is great. Yeah. But no, tanning is your skin trying to protect itself. So enjoy the sun safely, but yes. the tanning is a sign of um, basically the skin trying to develop yes. itself. Okay, and what about vitamin D? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, vitamin D um, is, you occasionally come across patients who, you know, will argue about their sun tan or whatever because of their vitamin D. But in actual fact, that's not a valid argument. So, the amount of vitamin D that's generated from the sun is actually, you know, 15 minutes of exposure um, is sufficient. Um, but the other thing is vitamin D is so readily supplementable from diet and that's really what the recommendations are at the moment like is to supplement even from super milk or you know from oily fish whatever but that vitamin D is because you're right an awful lot of um, for example we're now even supplementing children we're supplementing babies with vitamin D yeah. but it's not a it's not an argument to deficient vitamin D deficiency is not an argument yet sometimes. Okay, okay. And then some people um, deliberately try to tan by using sunbeds. Do you have any advice for that? Oh gosh, I, I mean I love some of those uh, people who are using sunbeds to actually meet um, patients that I would have looked after who would have developed um, maybe not even a, a fully invasive skin cancer. And the the sheer regret and the fear, you know, they felt from using them, it, they're a complete no-no. I mean, if, if you absolutely need to have a tan, there's such good, you know, false tan and tanning products. Um, and, and, you know, it's aging to your yeah. skin. Like, yeah. if you see people who may have used them extensively in the past, um, and really, they, they, while it might look nice now, down the line, is yeah. people have huge regrets about okay. using them. And you mentioned that some of your patients and you know have developed um, skin cancers um, later and you know if somebody has a change or growth or something they're you know something new that they notice, what do they do about it? Well the first port of call is to go to their GP. You know, GPs are very versed in recognising the signs of skin cancer. And the other good news is that there's a very wide network of what's known as pigmented lesion clinics which have been set up with the National Cancer Control Programme and they're regionally distributed and they act as rapid access for assessing um, certain um, worrisome moles. So, you know, if patients are worried at all, like there's a very good pathway yeah. there. Yeah, so they should have yes. in that regard of access. Um, and just before we finish up, um, you know, do you have any kind of general advice 
for um, for people just about minding their skin to have good habits, that sort of thing? Well, I think the um, even if you were to set aside the whole skin cancer risk, I mean, the most part, important part of anyone's skin regimen should actually be protecting from the sun because it is the single most call, the biggest cause of both skin cancer and skin aging. So here we're spending all this money on various mm -hmm. cosmetic products and actually as simple as protecting your skin from the sun is going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that would be, so incorporating your sun protection between April and September and then just taking care to moisturize your skin um, and to, um, you know, also being careful about not using very harsh products um, on your skin. There's, a, you know, a lot of, um, peels and you know dermabrasion products or whatever and sometimes i think irish people are very uh, fair and very mm -hmm. sensitive skins but i mean the most fundamental thing is avoiding uv damage okay just being sun smart yeah okay sun smart and um, well thank you very much question you're welcome